Hello, everyone, and happy Circuit Python Day. We have a very special guest for our next session. We're going to be chatting with Charlene Gonda about her fantastic Circuit Python project. Charlene, thank you so much for being here. Oh my God, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Happy Circuit Python yes. Day. Yeah, snakiest day of the year. Snakey. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you do a lot of Circuit Python projects. And I was hoping we could, you know, chat them through and uh, talk about uh, what you've been working on and, you know, what you got to show us. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have been using CircuitPython for a while now. And I thought maybe I would go through some of my earlier projects, nice. but then also um, some some projects that I'm most proud of. And then maybe, maybe projects that I, I don't know where they're going to go, but they look kind of cool. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. Okay. Um, so I'm still really happy with this, even though it's like, this is like one of my first um, Circuit Python projects. Um, I don't know if I can. Yeah. So this is a ring. And let me turn it on. So it uses the black um, LED pl uh, acrylic from Tap Plastics. And Excellent. I made it so that um, this frame is actually a capacitive touch sensor. Oh. So you can touch it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, no. It's okay. No. Well, I guess sometimes kept, oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. okay, excellent. Yeah. So it's sort of like a little counter guy. Oh. Um, so uh, my thought was like, I don't know. I just wanted some some sort of interactivity with this. Uh, and my thought was, oh, maybe I can use it as some sort of counter as I go about my day. I don't know. Count how many yellow cars I pass. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, and then I think, but then it only goes to seven. So it goes back to one or I guess that was five, uh, six, I think. Yeah. Two, three. Never mind. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, it's sort of one of my earliest ones and I made it super easy because, I was able to slap together this thing, make it sort of focus on like how it looks a little bit. And like, mm -hmm. I I didn't really know how to solder. So, so this solder joint right here is like very bad, but <laughs> it, it was so cool to be able to just think of an idea and then just have it pop out in yeah. real life. And I um, know that um, you were struggling a little with the cap touch, but still even even despite that, like no one would know because it, it still looks so pretty. Like it has the hexagon shape. Um, and I mean, that solder joint, I mean, it's fine. Yeah. Um, and then you have like the acrylic everything. So what, what microcontroller is running that? Uh, it's actually running on a Gemma M0. So I, I had it in a case, but right now I have it um, outside of the case. I'm going to take it out. Um, mm. So it has all of, you know, the, the, Gemma M0 and then it's got this wire and then it's got like this Very battery. Cool. So mm -hmm. and and the case um that the Ruiz brothers made actually sort of made it so that it was like this compact thing. Um nice. so it made it super easy to make a wearable and I was I was really happy when I made this. Yeah. I know. I was like, wow, I just made a thing that I can wear around and it was so fun. Yeah. To just be able to do that, you know. Um, and, and I feel like that was one of the projects that like really sort of like opened my eyes a little, uh, like suddenly there was this tool, right. That yeah. I could use to make a bunch of things that, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't before. Um, right. <laughs> so, so it was very, very exciting. Yeah. So from there, there's been like a lot of projects and, for some reason, I ended up doing a lot of uh, wearables. I got really attracted to uh, like wearing things that light up. Yeah. Um, so one of the other ones, and this is like a lot more recent. So this is a headband and I kind of, uh, you can kind of wear it like this and it doesn't look like it can light up. Mm -hmm. But then if you turn it on and it's it'll surprise. take a bit of a second. Yeah. Oh. So it just does that. And what I liked about this one is the tool. Um, it's like it's like tool fabric on top. I so I just yeah. wrapped it, wrapped um, this matrix, uh, an LED matrix that oh. I sort of DIY from strips. So these are just strips. And then I made a matrix out of it. Very uh, cool. 
And then I just thought that the tool did a really fantastic job because otherwise you wouldn't know that there are yeah, LEDs that's a in there. Great diffuser. Yeah. Um, and there's so many ways to diffuse the NeoPixels. We have some guides on like different materials you can use, but it's always really cool to see it like in real life, <laughs> like yeah. to see an actual project that used a, a different diffusion material. Yeah. And I feel like that's um, one of the fun challenges for me mm. is to like, how do you make it? so that uh, the LEDs are almost like a surprise. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah. like the thing still looks great when it's off, but then when you turn it on, it's like, oh my God, it's like upgraded. Yes. Um, <laughs> so this, I actually made this for a concert um, oh, nice. <laughs> and it was so fun to, I feel like it's one of the perfect like situations to wear Absolutely. <laughs> LEDs <laughs> around. Um, yes. Otherwise people kind of question it, but... <laughs> Well, one of my um, sort of uh, uh, design constraints that I love to like try to challenge myself with is how do you make a wearable that looks uh, that that you can wear in a casual setting? So like yeah. a lot of times you will see people wear, wear LEDs in like concerts or like raves or you know like things uh, like parties so it's yeah. like things where, f places where you kind of want to stand out a lot yeah um but i feel like i don't know leds could be just as beautiful as like a diamond yes. or like a sapphire um and they're cheaper so <laughs> sometimes true. it's like really fun to think about what what could you make what, what kind of jewelry can you make that still has a delicate sort of look to it but but is mm. but has leds um and uh, very often I end up doing like circuit sculpture projects that yeah. don't require code when when I'm in that headspace. Yeah. Um, but this is one that uh, I was able to make with a uh, uh, this uh, Fibonacci LED, which I'll talk oh. about in a bit. Okay. So yeah, so <laughs> it's it's sort of like this um, uh, sort of eye yeah. eye shape necklace um yeah. it's got the controller in the back like this oh, very um good. and this is one of the I, I struggle with capacitive touch there is a capacitive touch okay. sensing portion here but mm. it's like very finicky um it's always been finicky ever since i made it but I, i'm still pretty happy about it yeah. um it looks and, amazing yeah and this is actually a uh, one of um jason coon's uh fibonacci leds like one mm. of the one of the really tiny tiny ones yeah. and it's just running um the circuit python led animation libraries um comet oh very cool yeah i'm pretty sure it's like the rainbow comet yeah. um and it's kind of wild because i kind of stopped here i was like you know what this is kind of cool already. <laughs> yeah, if it ain't broke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. fix it. <laughs> I've been wanting to like think about um, like what kind of animations I could add to mm -hmm. it because it. I actually built it on um, an S3 board. Oh. I think it's like ESP32 S3 or some kind of ESP32. Yeah, but... I think the S3 has the purple. Yeah. Shape. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I feel like, you know, it, it's got Wi-Fi. I could make it do things. But the other design, like, challenge for me is uh, what 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 kind of interactivity is good for jewelry, right? Because yeah. there's actually not a whole lot of um, sort of prior work that you could use. I mean, there's obviously, yeah. like, a lot of people have been making a lot of wearables, but... Um, there isn't like a default sort of like interactive mode <laughs> when you yeah. are making jewelry, right? Uh, yeah. So it, it's sort of like what's uh, uh, figuring out how to make it inter in a, interactive in a way that is makes sense, that it uh, is a little bit interesting, but like not mm -hmm. super intrusive. Like, because if you ask people to sort of like interact with it, yeah. then <laughs> like, well, <laughs> you know, they'll have to poke you right <laughs> when, when like which they're touching your necklace or something <laughs> yeah which may, yeah. May, may or may not be like comfortable right yeah um but one of the and one of the uh i think successful experiments mm. um that i've been able to do in terms of interactivity 
is this guy. It is a uh, eight by eight uh, LED grid. Nice. Um, and it's connected to, I think this is like a NRF 52840. Okay. Um, yeah. So it has Bluetooth, although I'm not going to try to uh, get that up and running right now. That's but <laughs> it, this is a capacitive touch um, sensor. So it's like decorative, but it's also capacitive touch. So nice. let's see if it'll work. Uh, yeah, there we go. Ooh. So um, it's a random uh, sort of yes or no answer. Oh. So I usually will ask people like, ask the universe something. Um, ask the universe a yes or no question. Uh, and then they'll be like, okay, is it going to rain today? And then you you ask the universe and it goes like, no, it's not going to rain today. Or like, yes, you are adorable. Um, <laughs> That's so, so cool. It's, it's like a magic like, eight ball kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like it can only do yes or no questions. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was really fun because like otherwise it's kind of just, you know, this sort of subtle animation mm. um, that adds a little bit more to it but then there's an extra layer of like surprise when you find out that there's actually an interactive component to it yeah um, and what i love about your designs too is that they look great when they're off but also on so that's yeah. like that's something i think that's really hard to achieve with wearables and one reason why i haven't spent too much time in that world <laughs> um but but what your i think your designs are really successful in that and i also really like how the capacitive touch is like this kind of like art art deco kind of um, dis- um design yeah um, hint, so that's cool. i definitely take a lot of um a lot of inspiration from art deco design mm-hmm. i think it's <laughs> I think it's because it's very forgiving, like it's very simple geometric shapes mm. and you can usually achieve a very sort of in- visually interesting effect, even if it's just like simple geometry yeah. combinations, yeah. Uh, which it's I find cool. really fascinating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I also wrote a guide for this. This is like, I believe this is my first, this was my first. I, I think I remember that one. Yeah. 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 And I was so happy to be able to like share how this is made. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's it's definitely been one of my oldest designs as well. Um, cool. um, okay, so I think um, that's sort of like the wearables category. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the other categories that I have found myself attracted to is um, like soft robots, um, or at least like just soft companions. Uh, and it's great because I know nothing about sewing. I mean, okay. I know some sewing. Um, (laughs) I, uh, but I definitely not an expert, but it's fun to sort of like learn how to do it and Mm -hmm. then focus on that skill and then have, circuit python sort of be the easy part of it you know like yeah. it's it's sort of easy to make a servo move um and then i can get to focus on um figuring out how to make the rest of the robot right um yeah. so this one i mean i guess you tell me you tell me if it looks like it could be a robot but um, <laughs> this is my little bow friend <gasps> oh so cute <laughs> I think I named her Bao. Um, she has like a little bit of a, a cross eye thing going on, which I think makes her a little bit cuter. Yes, I definitely. <laughs> but this is using um, that monster mask um, Adafruit oh, board. Classic, yeah. Mm-hmm, very classic. And then this is actually a 3D printed piece that I just oh. like fabric glued on. Um and it this... looks really integrated into the the plush. Yeah, and then let me un. Yeah, so it also has so it's very it's very like fluffy, mm-hmm. and I actually integrated little USB hand warmers into oh. it because I wanted it to be like a soft and warm yeah. like thing because it's a bow like it's a bow, bow yeah. they're supposed to be warm you know and they're <laughs> like she's in this little steam basket. So she's, if you pick her up, like she should be like a comforting weight and a comforting, um, <laughs> comforting temperature. That's um, awesome. So that's kind of like what uh, she looks like. Wait. Uh, and I actually put like little, um, this bead that oh. like weighs her down. Okay. So it's very, uh, it's one of those projects where I kind of, 
uh, you you kind of had to experience it in person. <laughs> <laughs> but I did make this. I think I made this like in 2021. So I don't know like what I was expecting really. But because you can't really see that it's heated and you can't really feel that it's weighted. But you just have to believe me. <laughs> yes. No, I, I'm, I can I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It kind of comes yeah. through maybe for, for the shape through the yes. shape. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's so I don't know, like it, it's so comforting to just like have this little bit of like uh, dynamic sort of yeah. uh, portion to this thing because you could just make it without the animated eyes. But I think the animated eyes kind of make it more alive. It gives a lot of character. Um, it reminds yeah. me of a Jorvan Moss in a few of his talks recently has talked about how to um, kind of add character and bring life to designs yes. and it's subtle movements like that that really make a difference yes um, so i think it's really effective um, the illusion of life is yes important. That's, that's what you said yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. man i can't yeah i love cuddling with this thing um yeah. i also had to figure out like how mm, the webcam is a little bit tough to see mm -hmm. oh you have uh, to bring it all together at the, yeah at the top. like to yeah. sort of have the the folds be per, uh, believable yes it's believable as bow <laughs> yes <laughs> and that was kind of quite challenging for for my current sewing uh capability but that was really it was a super fun build and again you know it allowed me to sort of like get from idea to execution like mm. super fast i mean yeah. but, and by fast i mean like i think it was over the course of uh, a couple i want to say like, over a week Okay. but like That's working fast. on it at night yeah. and stuff um, <laughs> so yeah i'm like quite happy with how that one turned out and i think i made it during the winter so it was like oh, my little winter better. companion yeah. <laughs> one so day cute. maybe i'll like make it wearable or something i don't know oh like portable bow <laughs> yeah like a little and then like ah <laughs> <laughs> sorry don't 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 worry don't worry i won't eat you You're <laughs> it's okay it's okay we'll put you aside <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and then i think I, i've only ever made two and mm -hmm. the other one is this little oh. little guy and oh. i actually made a linkedin learning course for um this robot cat oh and wow yeah i uh i named it uh how to make a robot wait what did i say so it was circuit python 101 um, how to make an internet connected robot cat. Oh. Um, so you can actually, I don't think I have the feed up anymore, but mm. you can kind of see that it's like, oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. It's alive. Oh, it's a little paw. Yeah. <laughs> and then this um, is like a little indicator light Okay. Uh, to, to see if it's uh, connected to the internet, essentially. Mm, yeah. um, it's just checking if I'm like connected to the feed. And right now I just have it so that it randomly like will move its um, paws. But then in uh, the course, you can actually customize it so that, you know, you can say left or right or like both. Um, <laughs> and then it's powered by, I think it's an Adafruit um, Metro M4. Oh, okay. With like yeah. the Wi-Fi with Airlift. Oh, like Airlift, yep. Mm -hmm, like a co-processor. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it was kind of great because it was an all in one board. Um, you can kind of abuse <laughs> the board a bit and like attach two servos directly to it. So it's probably yeah. not what you would want to do. Um, nor like if you wanted to sort of support the power requirements better, but <laughs> it works for like a prototype like this. Of course. Yeah. And I will often use, a. I always keep a couple of metros on my desk and that's usually what I start with. And then you slim it down as you go. Yeah. <laughs> But exactly. you want all the GPIO and everything available yeah. at first because you, you don't want to limit yourself. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it was sort of a fun board to prototype with. It was super, super fun to get to like share um, this knowledge with people, especially mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, I feel like it's kind of wild that with one board and like one USB mm. connector, like you can make like this thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, so it's super fun. Uh, definitely check that out if you wanted to. I think I think it's due for an upgrade at some point. It's got, it was like uh, Circuit Python seven or something like that. Okay, and we're at nine yeah. now. We are at nine. So, yeah, yeah. We gotta we gotta upgrade. But yeah, this is the the little cat. So He's very cute. happy. I have not ever named this cat. 
Okay. So we're going to have to figure that out. <laughs> but it's also very soft. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, wearable. I feel like there's a lot more to sort of learn in terms of um, uh, soft robotics. Because uh, mm. right now it's just like, a servo right like it's literally the horn is right there so it was kind of nice that it's like little stubby stubby little arms and legs because you can yeah. just stick a servo in there and you don't have to worry too much about like the mechanics of it it's just yeah. it'll move and it'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so that is sort of like the um uh, what the the um, robotics sort of uh, explorations that I made. I do have one more project, and this one is sort of a, a work in progress that I'm not sure I'll ever finish. Okay. Um, so it's a little bit falling apart right now, but it's fun to see. Okay. So oh. this is a a little um, fairy from oh. a Breath of the Wild. Uh, Zelda. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it, it lights up and it has a little like touch sensor here. So if you touch it, it'll also sometimes just move. But okay. uh, if you touch it, it like sort of like flaps its wings. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and then it uses those like little pager motors, um, oh, the little yeah. dollar ones. Yeah. Uh, and it's a little bit falling apart right now, but. <laughs> it's a little chaotic, but I, I, I think that's a great idea though. Like I think, yeah. <laughs> and I think like. I think I got sort of the look of it, right? Yes, you definitely did. Um, yeah. But there's a little bit more work here cuz it, it turns out that spheres are very hard to make they or are. to print. Yes. <laughs> um so the bottom is sort of like not that great. Um mm -hmm. and then but then uh, I had I really wanted to make it so that it was like internally lit, so I actually wrapped the microcontroller and the batteries around with an oh, led Not sure. I, I don't know if i would recommend that uh <laughs> but, but i can i, I can oh, kind of like I show here that. so i have like a little um uh shield like a little vase mode sort of print to, oh. to isolate the the leds from the microcontroller That's yeah it's cool. a hot mess in there but <laughs> <laughs> but it achieves the effect you're you're looking for, so it, yeah. it's all right. Yeah, yeah, and it's like one of those things where I I feel like I feel like maybe one day I'll sort of like try to clean it up a bit and then like try to share it out more. Yeah. Um, but sometimes sometimes you learn something from a project and you don't necessarily get to share it out as much, but that's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay for product projects to just be for you sometimes. <laughs> yes, I I'm a big supporter of that. Well. Yeah, and this, it's actually yeah. hard to get like wings to move like that with because you get into this whole thing of like the weight of the wings, and it's yeah because there's um there was a fairy wing project that Noe and Pedro did a while back, and I, that was it was actually really difficult to get all of those mechanics and everything going yeah. like you think it would be simple but it it isn't it's it's a lot more complicated so i think you know it's cool you're using little pager motors and yeah know, I, th I think you'll get there um, yeah. but i i i love it as a it looks just like the the thing from the video game so. yeah it's like you know our everyone's favorite item or yes. favorite companion i guess fairy yes. companion yes yeah <laughs> um but yeah i also feel I, I really wanted to get it sort of ready for the tears of the kingdom release mm. and then i was like never mind <laughs> i'm just kidding i mean zelda's like evergreen you know like it's very it's true. always in style it doesn't matter if there's a new game or anything like it's just it's always great so that's very true yeah, yeah. and it, i don't know I, it's such an iconic thing too like if you've ever played the games you kind of will probably know about the fairy so yes um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of like, it was a very challenging project. I actually went through a lot of iterations for those wings. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do like an edge lit sort of acrylic mm. wing yeah. or something. Um, but it turns out uh, there are limits to the weight uh, that those pager mo yes. motors can take. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of gave up on that. I have like a bunch of these like prototypes of wings. Mm -hmm. 
did not work out, but that's okay. <laughs> all right. I, I'm all putting those you things down. you learned yeah. will come down to other projects and this one too. So it'll, yeah, exactly. It's all worth it. <laughs> one day, one day, maybe it'll be, it'll be helpful. Yeah. Okay. I have uh, three more projects. Okay. Um, two of them are matrices because matrices are life. I don't know. LED matrices yes, are like yeah. so, so fun to work with. And it's like sort of the easiest way to, um, maximize the amount of LEDs that you have in a space, mm. but then like still, and then it becomes a display surface, right? So it then th the possibilities become kind of endless. Yeah. Um, so one of my favorite projects, and I've shown this before, so I'm not going to talk about it too much, but okay. is this um, Wi-Fi oh, cube? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's see. Hopefully I am lucky this time. So it, <laughs> it'll, oh, there we go. Um, yeah. So I have uh four of these matrices um chained to make like a really long rectangle mm -hmm. um and then the top one is separate and the bottom one is separate okay um so the cool thing about it is that everything is in here and everything is off the shelf so just a ptg 3d printed frame and then um i, I can actually pop this out real quick um, you can see that everything is sort yeah. of in there. It is quite packed. I probably would not recommend, you know, productionizing it this way. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it's got an accelerometer, so I can even oh. um, flip it around, and then the wow. flip will change the animation itself. Um, and I wrote a little web sort of uh, page for mm -hmm. it, like a little web app. So you can change whatever is um, uh, text that's displayed um, that's via cool. Adafruit IO, um, which awesome. is, is another thing that like makes it super easy. Yeah. Uh, then you're not wrangling with like setting up servers and stuff like that. Absolutely. You're just using it. Um, and so I remember when this guide came out, I was like in total awe of it. Like it's such an amazing build. So if you haven't seen this guide, definitely check it out. We'll put it in the description. Um, it's it's really impressive, both hardware wise and software wise, with Circuit Thank Python. Thank you. I appreciate that. That is such a huge compliment. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, I to this day, I think this is still like one of my favorite sort yeah. of projects that I've ever made. Um, and I, I will make, I usually, um, not super excited to like make a project again. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like this is one of those where like, yeah, I would probably keep repairing it and keep making like copies of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's that one. And then, mm -hmm. um, the other matrix, uh, which I think I have, uh, forgotten to charge mm -hmm. is <laughs> this, um, this, uh, clock. And actually, I'm just going to quickly plug it in. Yeah. Um, but it is a, I call it like a super customizable clock. Um, because very often when you buy clocks, mm. they are usually like you can maybe customize them, but then you can't really like put your own personality to them. Right. So my hope was that, you know, if um, we can make a clock that is oh there we go uh that ju just is a platform for customization yeah um then uh, maybe it'll be sort of uh, easy and then maybe it's a good starting point if you wanted to sort of explore what it would be like to play with circuit python play with like electronics um so right now it's just showing a clock um but then it also has an excel uh accelerometer and a microphone so oh. if i do this then it has a oh. um, audio visualizer and the little microphone is some is right there. So Sweet. it's reacting to the sound of my voice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, and then um, I can go back to clock mode. There we go. And then I can also t tilt it. And this now becomes a timer. So oh. I can add... Oh, that's uh, a great way to visualize the timer. Yeah. So every minute uh, is one block. Okay. And then if I press this, then it starts counting down. Um, and I've actually used this because a lot of times I forget the world when I'm uh, working or yes. like when I'm coding. 
Um, yeah. So I'll forget to eat. Uh, so this is like a great like Pomodoro timer almost where it's like it can force a break. Yes. Um, and it actually has a speaker as well. Oh. Uh, so that uh, makes it uh, so that it can actually alarm, like like set up alarm bells. Um, awesome. Yeah. So definitely one of my favorite projects still. Um, and I have a guide for this in Make Magazine as well. And it oh. uses um, actually a uh, Ruiz Brothers... Um, model from oh. their sort of matrix project like this one. Oh, the raised grid the, yeah yeah i just modified <laughs> it slightly so that it hangs off so it has like little ears to hang off oh, um but cool. yeah they're they like make it so that um they isolate each of these pixels mm. um and then they show up as like a square they yes. actually even show up as a square in the screen, which is wild. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you can kind of see the speaker in there as well and the mm. and the small battery. Yeah. Um, but I kind of designed it so that you can just keep it plugged in. Um, cool. But then if you wanted to use it as a timer, you can, like, take it out. Um, nice. But you can – there's so much room in there. So, like, mm. I feel like there's so, so many things that you can, like, still pack in, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. And then what board is that running with? It is running a um, the RP twenty forty um, prop maker. Oh, Featherly. prop maker! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I wanted a mic, I wanted a speaker, everything. everything. <laughs> and I was like, "Well, <laughs> this is it." There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted LEDs, and it has like the the convenient connections for the LEDs. Um, I had at one point thought about like sticking a servo in here. Oh. And then, you know, the, like some sort of like, instead of sound, maybe it can Good like wave at flag. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then I was like, you know what? I will let, I, I, I have to like commit to sort of the MVP. Yeah, you do have to have that moment where you're like, this is now done. And I yeah. Will yep. <laughs> this is a finished project. And if people want to add a servo to it, it's very easy if you're using the prop maker of yeah. Featherwing. <laughs> Very cool. Um, definitely super fun. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's sort of like all of my like um, work uh, sort of projects that are are finished and or like maybe finish one day. Yeah. <laughs> and and I feel like yeah, I I do have one last thing to share. Okay. That I don't know where it's gonna go yet but okay. it's super fun. Um, yeah. Very often when I make projects, I end up being inspired by the material mm -hmm. that I'm using. So like sometimes, you know, that feeling where you see a thing and you're like, oh man, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna make something with this thing. I don't know what, but I'm going That's to something. make something with it. That's kind of how I felt about this gold um, little dial that's a here. good note yeah yeah <laughs> it's like this item is gonna make it to one of my projects and it did um yeah. so this is another item uh it's actually one of the newest um seed boards mm. uh the the seed round displays and oh fruit. the round ones yeah. mm -hmm. and i was like man there's so many possibilities here so this is oh the webcam okay. oh, okay. well. yeah <laughs> so it's a emojis. little emoji player and I, I have oh. it so that it can change eventually. I don't know if it can actually. Boop. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, so it kind of changes whenever you uh, tap it. Okay. Uh, and it selects sort of like a random emoji. This one's like a laughing one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then I also have it. There's like a, a bug right now where um, I actually have it so that you can text it like an emotion. Oh, okay. <laughs> And then, and then it'll like display that emoji, emotion emoji on this thing. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and I think the last thing that I texted is screaming. Screaming. Uh, <laughs> so that's why it'll like keep going back to screaming okay. <laughs> every time I touch it. But it's like so fun and it's so compact. Yeah. Uh, I don't know like what form it'll take. I feel like it could totally be a wearable or something. But I'm quite happy yeah. that. Um, you can kind of force it to or you, you can sort of like really get squeeze out um, some performance uh, with 
uh, playing GIFs on CircuitPython. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's like a relatively new thing, right? It is, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I Mark Gambler, a um, member of the community, was one of the ones that first like implemented it in the core and then yeah. it's kind of gone from there. But yeah, it's it's really cool. You can just you can play a GIF if you want. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Yeah. And I feel like uh, it, it makes it easy because I feel like you can definitely do sprites um, yeah. as well. But then, I don't know, like there's something about, oh, Oh, there's the bug. <laughs> there's something about like being able to just like put a direct GIF into yeah. your microcontroller, you know, and yeah. then all of a sudden maybe you can like download it um, via some API call or something. Yeah. So uh, I'm very excited about this. Uh, I and I don't know. I don't know. It's one of it. It's the same sort of challenge of like you know, if I'm going to make it a wearable, how do you make it interactive mm. in a way that makes it fun? Uh, and and maybe in a way that like is intuitive um yeah. but yeah uh, well this is a little you know questionable but one thing you could do is maybe if you did like a news api and you could have it like interpret like how the news is that day like yes. is it screaming or is it is there something yes. actually kind of good happening um, it's like a stock ticker but yes emoji yeah exactly yeah that's amazing hopefully hopefully it's not always just like screaming. i mean i hope so but y you never know um you never know yeah. yeah yeah um but yeah uh those are sort of like all of my projects so far i i feel like this is such a deep creative outlet for me um and and i'm 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 really i don't know i'm, I'm really glad that all of these tools exist like that all of these sort of like I, I think of them as um paint colors in my paint palette yeah. you know <laughs> like if i if i wanted to paint a picture ish of like a 3d thing um then i have all of these sort of like lego pieces yeah. that i can uh play with uh, and it's just super fun i feel like if i uh i, I feel the happiest when i'm creating something that i've thought about or like mm -hmm. that i've that i've come up with um and yeah it's just like a different sort of fulfilling thing <laughs> yeah. that's so awesome and i love that then you share it um for folks to get inspired by or riff on or everything and yeah, yeah. <laughs> i feel like that's important because that's kind of how i learned and i want to make sure that i give back as well uh but yeah that's why i started sharing projects too i think it's this great cycle of like you learn and then you share and and yeah. just like CircuitPython, Code Plus Community, that's how it's built up. So That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. And I feel like that's how – you actually. I, I actually feel like I learn better that way if I'm like yeah. sort of sharing the process out. Um, and then, and then you know, I, I feel like there is uh, – I'm still sort of like fighting the impulse to sort of polish everything before mm. I share it out. Um, but then I think there's a there's like a, a a boundary there of like well maybe some things I just don't end up sharing uh, yeah. because it's like eh. like the, like I'm not super happy with it yet or like mm -hmm. maybe maybe it's just a thing that I did so that I could learn something new yeah um, but then yeah if I'm gonna share something out then like it's okay if it's not that polished because uh, that just means uh, it's it's more authentic and it yeah uh, maybe you're... people can still learn from it even if it's yeah. not that polished and i think there's great value in like showing your process and everything like that too you know show yeah. your work and exactly yeah. exactly yeah well thank you so much for coming on charlene this has been wonderful uh where can folks uh see your projects and see what you're posting up yeah um so you can find me on instagram at chardane c-h-a-r-d-a-n-e and um, I also will sometimes post on my blog. So that's uh, charlene.codes, C-O-D-E-S. Um, and yeah, those are like the two main places that you would find me. And then sometimes I write uh, Adafruit tutorials as well. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much. And everyone, uh, stay tuned for more CircuitPython Day fun. This has been fantastic. Have a good one.